يلا يا حبيبي اطلع اطلع يلا يلا دكتور مصطفى فوزي اتفضل دكتور عمرو دكتور محمود اتفضل يا فندم انا هخلي يوكو انجينير محمد عبد الموجود هو مش موجود ولا ايه؟ واحد بس بس مش مشكلة. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I know it's uh, a little bit late, and everyone is getting tired, especially those who started the, the journey last week. I personally feel like uh, this next Friday will be the end of uh, many things, but uh, hopefully we will have still energy to survive. Uh, we are here for uh, our SAD event on climate threats and adaptation solutions and links with ecosystem restoration in the Arab region. Again, another workshop uh, for uh, one of the uh, very important topics for this region. Uh, this uh, SAD event is organized uh, with a partnership between uh, the Unitarian Universalist Association, UUA, and the Engineering Association for Development and Environment, EADE, and uh, it's also in cooperation with uh, the Small Grants Program, the GF Small Grants Program. And uh, let me start first by uh, inviting uh, Salute, the uh, uh, representative of the Unitarian Universalist Association, to give uh, the opening remarks. Saluti, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Ahmad. Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Salote Songo, and I am the Director of Advocacy in Global Displacement with the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee, which is associated with the Unitarian Universalist Association. We are a network of people of faith who believe in the universal human rights principles and the inherent right and worth and dignity of all. UUSC started 85 years ago at the brink of World War II to protect those that were affected by the Holocaust in Germany. And our mission is to dismantle the systems of oppression that affect the human rights of those that are most affected by it. And we are so privileged to be in partnership with uh, these organizations here to be hosting this workshop because ecosystem restoration and human rights protection are inherently linked. Um, and we're very happy and, and very privileged, as I mentioned, to be here this morning. And I welcome you all. Um, and in, in the spirit of solidarity, um, I very much appreciate this opportunity. Pinaka. Thank you very much, Saluti. Uh, the, the, the way and the spirit you showed to help us in organizing this uh, SAD event is, is really very much appreciated by uh, all our team. And uh, before I give the floor uh, to Yoko, I just want to uh, uh, give an idea how, how the, the, the whole uh, uh, 
issue of this uh, side event started actually last year. The GF Small Grants Program in Egypt um, started a new partnership with uh, the MAVA Foundation. And the whole idea was to uh, build up the capacity uh, of the different stakeholders and also to see how we can build on the uh, experience that Egypt gained uh, by being the president of the COP14, uh, the biodiversity, uh, the CBD biodiversity COP, uh, because as you remember, Egypt was uh, the ch uh, chair the uh, the COP14 in 2018, and just uh, gave the chairmanship now to uh, to uh, China uh, lately. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, we organized uh, last year three workshops uh, on uh, how the, uh, the Egypt was able to uh, uh, benefit from having uh, 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 the chair for the CBD and also to prepare Egyptians for the post-2020 uh, uh, framework biodiversity framework, and I think we will hear today from Dr. Mustafa about this. And then we were also discussing how we can make the link between uh, climate uh, threats and uh, the ecosystem and make the link with the ecosystem restoration. So that, uh, that was uh, all the effort that we have done last year. And uh, uh, one of the workshops was uh, a regional one in which we invited all our partners from uh, the region, uh, the League of Arab States, the IUCN uh, regional uh, office, uh, and other as well, like the UNEP map, the UNFM, all the regional organizations were invited to this uh, workshop. And we had, uh, this was last year, and then we had uh, 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 a very good uh, and uh, uh, comprehensive report that were prepared by the two main consultants, Dr. Mustafa Foda and Dr. Uh, uh, Amr Samak, both are on the, on the panel. So without further ado, I would like to give the floor to uh, Yoko Watanabe, the global manager of uh, the, small, the GF Small Grants Program. And uh, Yoko uh, is, uh, is actually uh, based in New York, but she is here for the COP, and we are very happy and glad that she, is, she was able to join the, the side event. So Yoko, very much welcomed, and you have the floor. Thank you very much, Imad, and what a um, pleasure to be here today. Um, so I'm based in New York, but uh, global manager of the GF Small Grants Program. And it's actually very timely today that we are talking about climate change and the link with biodiversity. And it's such uh, a prominent link that there is that climate change is playing an increasing important role in the decline of biodiversity. And climate change affects the health of ecosystem and influencing the shifts and the distribution of the plants and animals and other human settlements as well. And conserving and restoring natural spaces, both on land and water, is essential for limiting carbon emissions and adapting to a changing climate. So bringing these two elements together at this COP, just before the Convention on Biodiversity COP15, is such a timely um, initiative and thank you very much, Imad, for pulling together all the, not only the national stakeholders, but the regional stakeholders from the Arab region to discuss about this, not only the link, but what can we do more under the presidency of uh, Egypt on the Convention on Biodiversity and bring in the partners together, like the MAVA Foundation, which is based in Switzerland and it's a philanthropical uh, foundation and small grants program together. And, Actually, we did discuss about this partnership in the very, very convention center during the COP14. And we said before the post 2020 global biodiversity framework is going to be uh, framed and be discussed, really bring in the message from the region and from Egypt so that uh, we can really come up with a concrete activities and have a policy dialogue, not only among the governments, but bring in the civil society voices and also private sector and others so that we can have a multi-stakeholder uh, policy dialogue 
and bringing that input towards the post 2020, which is going to be discussed in December in Montreal, and hopefully that will be concluded and we have a new goal to adhere on. Just a little bit about small grants program. We are ex um, present in 128 countries. Egypt is one of the most uh, largest and oldest program that we have. And uh, with thanks to all the stakeholders here, I've been hearing all the history of the 30 years of small grants here in Egypt, where we have been able to support local actions on the ground with civil society and local communities. And I think you're hearing all along how important it is to bring in local voices and local actions to these global um, forums and implement those uh, decisions more in a multi-stakeholder manner with sustainability and commitment. And particularly, the local communities have the solutions and the knowledge that they can bring in to protect the biodiversity, address the climate change issues, and move forward with a strong implementation moving forward. So in that regard, we are really um, delighted that this MAVA Foundation and Small Grants Program collaboration resulted in such an um, extensive dialogue between the different stakeholders in the region and was able to have a regional dialogue and have uh, concrete inputs moving forward towards a post-2020 global framework. And in, under the Jeff 8 we are committed to uh, further these initiatives from the local end and expand these uh, both on the ground, on the implementation, as well as policy dialogue like these so that we can replicate and strengthen and scale up the work on the ground. So with that few words, I'm really looking forward to hearing the outcome of the uh, dialogues and uh, how we can move forward as a partners and highlight some of the key lessons learned so that we can replicate um, and move forward with strengthened scale-up initiatives as we move forward on the implementation of this COP27 as well as COP15. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Yoko. Uh, you gave a very good um, background about the SGP and also how it uh, it links its work with the, um, uh, the issues, especially when it comes to uh, our uh, topic today. Uh, I think we have, uh, uh, let me uh, first, before we go for the panel, I would like to give also the floor, uh, in, uh, Mr. Mohammed Abdel Mawjoud has, has arrived, and uh, so if you can uh, just give us uh, welcoming uh, notes. Uh. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Mawjoud, uh, Director of Engineering Association for Development and Environment, uh, local NGO in Iraq. Uh, I will use this oppor opportunity to uh, put the light on the climate action efforts in Iraq. So thank you to join this uh, panel. Shokran, shokran, thank you. It was a real uh, honor to, uh, to organize and also to uh, coordinate with you and to prepare for the side event. So thank you very much for your support on that. Uh, now I'll, I'll start the um, the panel and we will have uh, 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 presentations and uh, um, uh, interventions from different people but I know also that we have we have a, a video that came from MAVA where is the video can we uh, hear first Dr. Mustafa let's see, uh, let's see the video that uh, was sent from MAVA uh, as uh, uh, a message to the uh, Yes. Ah, uh, no, the sound. Technical problem. Can you start from the beginning and you have the, the sound on, please? So until you solve this problem, uh, I'll, uh, I'll move ahead and ask uh, Dr. Mustafa Fouda uh, to make his presentation. Dr. Mustafa, I know when you start talking about this topic, you need uh, two side events, not only one. So, but please remember we have only seven minutes and I would really appreciate if you make it six and a half. 
Thank Dr. you very Mustafa. much, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, to respond to you within seven minutes, uh, I would like just only to focus on several issues. Number one, the process itself, how this uh, small grant program and MAVA process went on. It's not an easy to get as many as 150 people uh, from all different disciplines, whether the governmental or non-governmental or experts or research institution, whatever, to sit together for a long time. Not only at the scale of national level, but even at regional level to discuss common issues to a great extent. And that was a real challenge in itself. How can we end up by having one single language or at least we common understanding of what is going on? And certainly the main issue, as it is very clear now, we are talking about the GBF, Global Biodiversity Framework itself. And that stems from many, many facts, whether the decisions that were already taken in the last uh, Cup 14, CBD Cup 14 here in Sharm el Sheikh, that they call for establishment of uh, a committee or, uh, or co chairs to be able to look at all of the issues related to the future itself in harmony with the environment and at the same time, very specific actions need to be done to great extent. From that point of view, we have to take into consideration many, many other issues like UN decade on ecosystem restoration, for example. Uh, at the same time, we looked at even in Africa, where we had AMSEN meeting, where they declare, they have a declaration about biodiversity and climate change as well. And to my surprise, they approved many, many of the proposed targets already in GBF, especially those related to special planning, uh, ecosystem restorations, uh, extension of the protected areas and other uh, means as well to cover almost 30%. And you can continue on on all of the 21 targets related to mainstreaming or biodiversity, related to the participatory of all people together. So from that point of view, we have already the goodies that came out of this uh, process itself was to a great extent is the, how do you apply what they are calling us now? That means we are talking about, sorry. That we are talking about the transformative changes. You started with don't leave anyone behind. You have to take umbrella like sustainable development. You talk about uh, institutional reforms. At the same time, many other things, particularly the role of civil society in enhancing the process itself because they are the one who actually work on the ground. Those people, they can deliver a message very, very clearly, and that was a good thing that came out of this policy dialogue to extent, uh, shall we say, that the most important thing is are with the message that we already sent to the minister and the president of COP27, telling them very, very clearly what we think about the whole issue, how we take the issue of nature-based solution, for example, and the ecosystem into the whole aspects of climate change, whatever, and that was delivered not only to the minister uh, of foreign affairs, but even to the minister of environment as well. And we hope that we came out of this meeting here, not only with good decisions from COP27, but even to CBD COP15, in a way that we can continue the whole process. Fortunately, we have submitted even our side uh, event, concept note on the contribution of Egypt towards the adoption and implementation of the GBF. We told them very clearly that we are not waiting until we adopt this GBF, but actually we started the whole process based on all of the good lectures that were already presented, presentation by very, very highly qualified personnel related to the ecosystem restoration, for example, many streaming, uh, the role of citizen science, many, many of the issues, but uh, the time doesn't allow us to go in details about this. Not only that we will make a major contribution through the whole process, but certainly the team, the Egyptian team that they will be there in Montreal next month, uh, we will be able to, uh, shall we say, 
uh, enhance the process for the adoption in a way that we finish it within three days as it is supposed to be, especially between 3rd and 5th of December, and then we'll follow up with all of these uh, uh, discussions and adoptions of more than 60 issues that are related to biodiversity conservation, ecosystem restorations, and many of them. Uh, if I want to me, I can continue on, Dr. Ahmad, but you tell me. Yes, you have one minute. I have one minute? All right. So, uh, hopefully, Dr. Ahmad would be able to join us because he, like many others, couldn't get his visa to Canada, but we'll get it on time, hopefully. We will present the side event that will take place on 9th of December at 1.15 for those people who will be over there. So I personally, as a national focal point for CBD and other conventions as well, I'm very, very happy with the outcomes, not only on terms of reporting, but even in the messages that were sent at all different levels to a great extent. At the same time, the helping and, shall we say, improve the capacity of all participants yeah. at all different levels. These participants were able even to prepare themselves uh, several side events on the ecosystem restoration in desert ecosystem as well as the coastal as well. Uh, another one on the civil society uh, role in the COP27, at the same time one on the mainstreaming to a great extent. I'm very happy that some of these people already participated in the whole process like Dr. Amr and many other like Dr. Sharif and I could see good friends that I haven't seen for a long time. So thanks for this wonderful opportunity, Hani Shair as well. I'm very, very proud of uh, seeing one of my young colleagues that want to be in charge of a very important branch of the IUCN and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa. Uh, we will hear again about the, some of the results and recommendations that came from uh, from the workshop from Dr. Amr, but before I give the floor to Dr. Amr, maybe now technically we are ready to show the message that's come from uh, Gonzalo Viedo, of Viedo uh, from uh, Mava Foundation. He was not able to be here in Sharm Sheikh, but uh, he sent us a video, a message through the video. Can we put the video, please? Hopefully this time it works. My name is Gonzalo Oviedo. Again. Consideration. I would like to start by thanking the organizers of this uh, event. You Good afternoon, dear participants. My name is Gonzalo Oviedo from the Mava Foundation. I'm sorry I cannot be physically present with you today, but I hope I can convey a few thoughts through this video message for your consideration. I would like to start by thanking the organizers of this uh, event, UUA, the SGP Egypt uh, Unit, and uh, EAD for their kind invitation to the MAVA Foundation to participate and say a few words today. Let me start by saying something about the MAVA Foundation, as some of you uh, may not be familiar with it. Founded by Dr. Luke Hoffman, a renowned pioneer conservationist from Switzerland uh, in 94, as a family-led philanthropic foundation that focuses on biodiversity conservation and the promotion of sustainable economy. It has a small secretariat based in Switzerland and a regional office in Senegal. The vision of the MAVA Foundation is that biodiversity in our focal regions has improved we have catalyzed the shift towards an economy that ensures human prosperity and a healthy planet, and that the conservation community is strong, autonomous, and resilient. To that end, we work to conserve biodiversity for the benefit of people and nature by funding, mobilizing, and strengthening our partners and the conservation community. We work to provide a sustainable future for people and nature, focusing on fresh water and coastal ecosystems and cultural landscapes. We have four programs. 
one thematic and three geography. The thematic program is on sustainable economy and the geographic programs are in West Africa, the Mediterranean Basin and Switzerland. These are supported by a cross-cutting program that supports the capacity development of our partners. The MOVA Foundation supports climate change adaptation and ecosystem restoration in key ecosystems and species. And this is very relevant to many Arab countries in the Mediterranean region and in West Africa. We focus, for example, on key basins and aquifers in coastal island wetlands, in seagrass and coralligenous habitats, in terrestrial landscapes of high ecological value maintained by human practices, in mangrove areas, and uh, in habitats of key species like uh, sea turtles, uh, sea, bear, sea birds, um, small pelagic fish, and others. In the case of coastal wetlands, for example, we know that they are highly sensitive to climate change. For example, by the end of the century, the sea level is expected to rise by up to 620 millimeters in the Bojana Buna Delta in Albania and by up to 840 millimeters in the Gulf of Oristano in Sardinia. These are areas where we work with our partners. This impact will be greater if coastal wetlands continue to deteriorate. Water stress due to climate changes and human practices requires a restoration of river basins, which is work that we do with our partners as well. In the case of terrestrial landscapes affected by unsustainable agricultural practices, land abandonment and climate change, our partners practice restoration of key areas, adaptation to new conditions, for example, to water scarcity. In habitats of key terrestrial and marine species, for example, the effects of sea level rise, stronger storms and higher temperatures affect marine turtles. And we are working with our partners for the restoration and protection of uh, beach uh, nesting sites. The MOVA Foundation has, and the GEF Small Grants Program implemented by UNDP established a partnership, a partnership in the year 2020 until this year 22 for joint actions in eight countries of the Mediterranean and West Africa, Egypt, Lebanon, Morocco, Tunisia, Turkey, Cap Verde, Guinea-Bissau and Senegal. The topics have included species protection, conservation and sustainable management of wetlands, coastal and marine areas, sustainable management of lands and ecosystems, and sustainable management of fresh water resources. As part of this partnership, a series of five policy dialogues was held in Cairo, Egypt, in December 21, four national dialogues and one regional dialogue, on the post-2020 global biodiversity <coughs> framework, gathering national and local authorities, universities, research institutes, experts, NGOs, and international and regional organizations. Participants achieved a better understanding of issues related to the GBF and its 21 targets and agreed, among other things, on an Arabic vision and position regarding the draft GBF. Recommendations from the dialogues address the wide range of topics, including climate change and ecosystem restoration, topics to be discussed further at this event. The MOVA Foundation was very pleased with the organization and results of the policy dialogues, which were key to preparing effective inputs for the final discussions on the GBF and for strengthening national and regional actions. Now, the MOVA Foundation is phasing out, given the life cycle of the Foundation, uh, funding to all grantees has been phased out this year and all our operations are finishing by the end of this year. 
Today, we are focusing on four key areas, strengthening organizations that we have been working with, consolidating partnerships that these organizations have created with us, exploring sustainable finance mechanisms so that they can continue working in the future, mobilizing fellow donors to raise their awareness and interest on the issues, uh, the areas, and the partners that we are working on and with. As an engaged donor, securing lasting impact and sustainability of the work is a priority that shapes everything we do, and we will continue to do our best in the months to come uh, to achieve what um, I have indicated. With these, dear participants, I close my intervention, thanking you for your attention and wishing you all the best in your ensuing discussions and in your participation at the COP um, of the Climate Change Convention. This is such an important event for the future of the planet, where your inputs, I'm sure, will be effective to ensure good conclusions, decisions and recommendations for future action. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Gonzalo, very much. Uh, we will send you a thank you letter for uh, the presentation. And also, we were very pleased to hear from you your um, uh, evaluation or assessment on what we have done here as a small grants program in Egypt. Uh, by the way, this was the first time for MAVA to do uh, a direct activity in Egypt. Uh, and it, I'm, I'm proud to, that this first time, and of course it will be the last time because MAVA is already phased out, but at least before they left the region, we were able to do something with them. Uh, now uh, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Amr Samak. Dr. Amr Samak was also very much engaged on, uh, on the workshops, the three that we have done last year and the two of this year. So uh, Dr. Amr Samak, uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ahmed, and um, uh, for uh, for giving me this opportunity to um, just to uh, show the uh, uh, the outcome from the two uh, 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 national dialogue that would happen here. So um, I will uh, just skip this because I don't think that. Uh, So I will, I will skip, you know, the first one because uh, I believe Gorozaris, you know, give us, you know, some information about the MAVA and the goal of the partnership initiatives uh, and because of the, of the time. So uh, uh, just to uh, the cooperation with MAVA for Egypt, you know, I will just give you some information about that. It is about uh, the suggested uh, uh, um, for the future. We start from the, uh, uh, it's just to show the Egyptian experience during the uh, COP, for, from COP 14 to COP uh, 15. And then it is the most important development, especially in the field of mainstreaming, uh, biodiversity in uh, various aspects. And of course, to see the challenges and the future outlook. So um, the national dialogue, we have two national dialogues. The, the two national, one of the first one was in Cairo, and the second one was uh, in uh, uh, El Sokhna. And the two uh, national dialogue was, uh, um, uh, you know, there are three sessions within each uh, national dialogue. The first one is about general lecture about um, the, uh, the biodiversity and uh, the importance of biodiversity and IC. Uh, uh, all of this uh, uh, regarding biodiversity. Then we have an open discussion. Then we have some kind of a specialist group uh, uh, dialogue. So in the first meeting, we have three uh, uh, different uh, uh, group, which is the one representing mining, infrastructure, sustainable agriculture, and fisheries. And the second one was about industry, energy, sustainable tourism. So this is the, uh, just to give you some info, you know, looking how we, we start working on the first meeting, and then this is the second meeting. So uh, the challenge that we uh, uh, end up, that we found that uh, um, the challenge facing, you know, uh, by, uh, by the various streaming is um, economic finance, 
you know, we have to have, you know, some economic finance within, if we would like to mainstream, you know, biodiversity, then raising awareness, uh, this is one of the problem that uh, we feel that we are not uh, talking the same language. I mean, the, uh, the environmentalists talking, you know, different language from the other uh, uh, people working in other in, uh, location, then how to link integrated the three convention, which is CBD, uh, desertification and biodiversity three, three together. So, uh, uh, of course, you know, with the achievement of Egypt during, uh, um, it's, uh, uh, during the, uh, the time where it was uh, uh, chairing the biodiversity is, the, in the national level, it uh, start to introduce environmental dimension within the uh, government and governmental uh, uh, projects. Then uh, um, also, we have some environmental uh, projects uh, and uh, uh, like in renewable energy and others. And we have also the biodiversity report which is presented on COP14 uh, on uh, uh, 2018. On the global level, um, uh, there is a global assessment of bird, the relationship biodiversity and human health and the global biodiversity outlook which is published on 2020. The, uh, uh, one of the most important is the role of civil society. So the civil society, the role of civil society is in fact to raise awareness and to involve civil society in biodiversity. And this will include the development of environmental if, uh, awareness through um, like, you know, initiatives like uh, protected uh, by its people, then education and training and uh, how can the uh, include, you know, environmental dimension of biodiversity within the uh, curriculum uh, starting from the uh, children up to uh, university uh, level, then uh, about media, about uh, uh, filming and other. Uh, this is some of the projects, you know, like a preparation of young uh, cadres in the field of extraction and maintenance of vertebrates. Uh, another one which is uh, green fin projects, which is one of the achievement also. The other one is uh, through na uh, uh, then through national dialogues, I will end by this one. So the national dialogues, we set some recommendation. Um, uh, first of all, inclusion of ecosystem and biodiversity values in environmental assessments is very important. The, the second is implementation strategy to improve policy across sector. And then to in, uh, inclusive of biodiversity issue in national and local uh, land planning. And this is very, very important because we already have uh, what we call, you know, uh, national land planning, but it, it you know, uh, uh, one of the missing items is the biodiversity, then incubation goals and target of uh, both 2020 global biodiversity framework and the policy uh, 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 framework, then assessing the financial risk uh, uh, arising from biodiversity and including the role of mainstreaming biodiversity and service in natural and among people uh, in education and policy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Amri. You gave us a very um, quick uh, summary of what uh, we have uh, discussed and also the, the outcomes of the uh, workshops at the national level. I may need to hear again later from Dr. Mustafa Foda about the regional uh, outcomes, if he would like to say something about them or you already said it in, uh, no, I don't think you said the... Yes, uh, I was planning to say that, but certainly since we have Dr. Mahmoud representing the Arab League, I would prefer uh, that uh, not only uh, you have regional organizations, and you still you have IUCN, and uh, regional IUCN as okay. well, and many other regional centers, so uh, I feel it is not fair. However, I can complement whatever they say okay. in a way that we'll have okay. uh, a common vision on the whole okay. issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa. Then I will, I will uh, get uh, um, the floor to Dr. Mahmoud Fathallah, the head of the uh, Council of Arab Ministers responsible for the environment. But let me give just a brief introduction about this, because when we organized the regional workshop, the whole idea was how to mainstream uh, what we are discussing at the regional level, and of course, uh, the, the mechanism at the, at the League of Arab States is a very important one, and I, I think we, we managed to, to, uh, to at least achieve this objective, so Dr. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud can tell us how this was done, and his also experience with this process, the MAVA-SGP uh, partnership. 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Ahmed. Uh, I would like to thank you for uh, giving me the uh, opportunity to, uh, to be part of uh, this uh, uh, panelist. And uh, let me uh, share with you uh, what is uh, what we are doing for the uh, coordination between Arab countries in, the regard, in regard of uh, uh, under the umbrella of CAMRI, uh, uh, Council of Arab Ministers responsible for the environment. Actually, we are maintaining the um, uh, annual meeting for, uh, for the council uh, in a ministerial level. And under this level, uh, we have a technical committee on uh, environment, which, uh, which is uh, uh, doing the uh, coordination and mainstreaming uh, the, the, the all conventional uh, aspects of UNCCD and UNCBD and also uh, UNFCCC. Uh, all those um, uh, conventions, each, uh, each one of them have uh, its own uh, Arab negotiators and uh, uh, its own uh, uh, discussions and uh, projects. Uh, but the, the, the technical committee is, is to collaborate all efforts in this uh, regard and uh, mainstreaming it uh, to how it would be uh, uh, action and uh, uh, preparing for uh, 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 preparing for each uh, convention uh, in uh, different uh, aspects. The first one is to have a capacity building and uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, negotiators, uh, for helping them to, uh, to, to, to have the toolkit of uh, how to deal with uh, various aspects and uh, important issues uh, in uh, each convention. Uh, also, um, we are maintaining the uh, daily coordination meeting for each convention to uh, have uh, uh, to to. Um, uh, to uh, uh, to, 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 to make sure that the Arab, uh, the Arab situation is uh, consistent in each uh, convention. Um, we help, we are also helping uh, countries to, uh, to have uh, national reporting with, uh, we, we are doing that with cooperation with uh, different uh, organizations such as uh, um, um, uh, the technical secretariats of, uh, of, of the conventions itself and also uh, UNEP and ESQA and uh, uh, IUCN and uh, uh, different uh, international and regional organizations. Um, oh, so I think uh, uh, this is this is the the, 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 the mandate of our uh, uh, council to uh, to help in uh, mainstreaming this uh, um, uh, conventions and the uh, and the decision making of uh, environmental uh, uh, aspects. Uh, it's very important uh, to uh, do uh, that uh, uh, science policy interface is very important to have uh, to make sure that the decision is um, consistent with uh, the, 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 the situations of, uh, of Arab countries and uh, how it help our countries to uh, to, to improve uh, the environmental uh, situation. Um, 
I think this is this is um, the, the, uh, something that I can share it uh, with you for right now, and uh, I will be happy for any questions uh, uh, from you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. In fact, uh, uh, I uh, I really uh, appreciate the the role that you have played to help uh, the recommendations of uh, our regional workshop to be uh, presented uh, and uh, to the technical committee on the uh, biodiversity convention that you have in, in the League of Arab States. And I think one of the, uh, one of the uh, uh, decisions that came out of the technical committee was uh, to take into consideration the, the, the report that came from, this, uh, from our regional workshop and I also remember that uh, some of the recommendations were taken seriously into discussion in the, in the League of Arab States within the technical committee. So uh, maybe I, 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 I wanted just to highlight these points because it was very important for us that the, the, the dialogue that we had at the, uh, in, in our regional workshop, it also included the, the biodiversity focal points from the Arab States, if you remember. So this is why this was the very much uh, uh, very good link that we had that in our regional workshop, we invited the League of Arab States, but at the same time, we also invite, invited the biodiversity focal points from the Arab Mediterranean countries because the MAVA was focusing on the Mediterranean region. So this helped a lot when we made our, uh, when we sent our report to the League of Arab States, it was very much appreciated by the biodiversity focal points. And I think, this was also very helpful uh, while discussing the global uh, biodiversity framework that Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Mustafa talked about. Type. Now, uh, I, I would like to hear, and all of you to hear from Dr. Hani uh, uh Dr. Hani is the regional uh, director uh, of the IUCN regional office uh, in Amman, Jordan, and uh, being here in the uh, in Sharm el Sheikh and the, the climate uh, COP, we I would like to hear from him uh, the how he finds the the climate uh, threats and adaptation solutions and the links with the ecosystem restoration. We are talking about ecosystem restoration and the the nature based solutions has been the issue and the new uh, uh, fashion. Everyone is talking about nature-based solutions. We are going to solve the climate by having a nature-based solutions. And I think this is not, this is now the, the thing that it's a fashion, but we have been talking about this for many, many, many years. But I think you have now the chance, Dr. Hani, to tell us how, from your perspective, as a biodiversity expert and also as a regional director for one of the uh, very uh, strong uh, organizations on conservation. How you find this issue is important for you. Dr. Hani, you have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Ahmad, for this opportunity and really happy to share with you our thought as IUCN within this uh, very famous experts in the region, Dr. Mustafa, Dr. Mahmoud, Dr. Am. And I, I, I would like to, uh, to focus in my intervention in two points. One mentioned by Dr. Fouda is the natural-based solution, and the other one, the message need to be delivered here from the region. But let me, in, in half minutes, share with you some figures from a global perspective, which the region is part of it, and uh, regional figures, which also scary, as, a, as I would argue, and this will, will, uh, will, uh, will make uh, the natural-based solution, as Dr. Ahmad mentioned, uh, a solution, a solution needed, not just for the region, for the global movement. First, uh, IUCN has, has assessed around 41,000 species, and most of these species now under the extinction uh, threat. Deforestation, we are losing around 100 species a day from deforestation. 50% of wetland has already lost. 
Uh, the people is impacted by climate change and suffering from acute food insecurity increased from 135 million in 2019 to 345 million in 82 countries in June 2022. So you can, you can feel the change and the impact happening not just from climate change to be uh, clear from other also threats, which is, we all know about it in our region. So this is one of the message. Our region is gonna be impacted more than the other regions because we have also the desertification. We have uh, the issue of climate change. We have the urbanization. We have the oil, uh, the oil uh, explosion in, in the Gulf countries. So in the Arab region, it is, uh, before I talk about the Arab region, it is the, the, the origin of the cultural and the agricultural civilization. So uh, the region, we, we have only 1% of forest from our area. So that's, that shows how, how is the region is, will be impacted also from climate change. Uh, just a quick figures about droughts and uh, flood events. 30 droughts events happened during the last uh, three years in the region. 96 flood events happened in the region. So that's mean we started to feel the impact in, and we, we should act quickly. So the other point I would like to cover in my intervention as well is it's expected that the temperature in our region will be 5% by 20, uh, 2100. So this is not, hap not will happen in other regions. So th this region will be more impacted than the other region. So to end, uh, the second point is the natural-based solution. IUCN believe, and we are trying to market the natural-based solution in all the session in the COP here because we believe this is the solution. Enough, in, in, enough industrial and uh, uh, other solution. We need to focus on nature and what nature could provide to us is to go back to what, what, uh, what was before the industrial ages. So nature-based solution from a cost-effective long-term solution for mitigating and restoring land affected by degraded, degradation process in Arab region. Natural-based solution can be divided in two main groups, soil solution and landscape solution. This is the solution we believe in IUCN, and this is we, wh what we advise based on the science and the knowledge output we provide all over the world. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed. Thank you very much, Dr. Hani. Uh, you gave us uh, some uh, uh, figures that make everyone understand that uh, we are not talking about uh, something that will happen in uh, 50 years from now, but things that already happened in the last year and the year before and so on. So the challenge is really big. Dr. Mustafa, I, I know that you want to complement something here. Yes, indeed. Uh I would like to add a few little things as well. Number one, this regional uh, workshop was very, very interesting in terms of mixing many, many things together, starting with the achievement through the current challenges and opportunities. Uh, we discussed issues like the COVID-19 and the green recovery uh, resource as well, uh, global and regional strategies, whether it's IUCN, whether it is MAVA, whether it is uh, GBF, whatever many, many cross-cutting issues dealing with the SDG and the Mediterranean, African agenda as well as uh, EBIS uh, uh, assessment on biodiversity, in addition to my favorite one, which is the marine uh, and coastal issues. Based on almost 20 presentations during all of this, and in addition what Dr. Hissam and Dr. Mahmoud said, there are other recommendations because I was the one who was reporting on this meeting, starting with the importance of the coordination and uh, cooperation among all Arab countries, not only necessary for finding uh, and uh, working together, 
but at the same time, very, very specific recommendation that came out of uh, CUP, uh, CBD CUP 14 about the presidential uh, initiative, which deals with uh, Rio conventions together, the three of them, how to mainstream and synergy of biodiversity, climate change, whatever. So we started the whole process in a way that we actually, during that year, we implemented many of them, including the ecosystem restoration, uh, as I mentioned. In addition to already, uh, we look at the issue of nature-based solution. Today in the morning, for example, there was, uh, there was a very interesting presentation about the uh, role of MBS or nature-based solution on climate itself by taking uh, wetlands, for example, and it was very, very interesting to see if you manage wetlands properly, whether it is artificial or natural, or natural, you can benefit greatly and you can shift a lot and you can even deal with many issues like what Dr. already Dr. Hissam mentioned, like natural flooding, for example, you can control them and many other things. The most important thing that I do remember is the importance of the Mediterranean countries. Mediterraneans are the host spot for many, many uh, issues, whether it's biodiversity, for example, a very small sea, but at the same time they have many, many endemic species, but at the same time it is a hot spot for climate change as well. Over the last 30 years, for example, the water temperature in the Mediterranean has increased by 1.6 degrees. The whole world still, we are talking about 1.1. Now we are 1.6, means that the whole Mediterranean is a hot spot for climate change. Based on all of this, we urge people through the Arab League uh, and their meeting as well to update their MBSAP, National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan, especially in relation to the GBF as well, and look at the uh, gaps in our knowledge and uh, specific issues related to the invasive alien species because this is a very important issue and many, many others. So I will stop here just only to complement with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mustafa, on that. Um, it, it, it was really uh, uh, also the discussion that we had while we were preparing for this session. Uh, we realized that still, and I was really glad to hear, but at the same time also sad, because when I hear that after two years, or, or almost four years actually, of uh, Egypt uh, uh, presidency of the uh, CBD, that is still we are hearing about the lack of mainstreaming or the difficulty of mainstreaming the biodiversity in, into the other policies. And uh, from uh, what Dr. Amr has presented when he said that we organized the six uh, uh, working groups on the different issues, mining, uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, tourism, and so on, still there is a gap of knowledge and gap of communication. And I think the sector of or the issue of biodiversity has to, to be given more uh, support, uh, not only in capacity, but also in resources. And uh, maybe at some point also, we have to go for some of the legislations that would help to make uh, all the different uh, sectors understand the importance of biodiversity. So. Um, uh, this, is, this is why I, I, uh, I was very happy to see from um, uh, the message that came from Gonzalo when he said still there is a long way to go, or, yeah, you, there is still a way that we have to go. The global biodiversity framework is something global, but at the end of the day, what we are suffering from is very local and sometimes, uh, you know, maybe on a smaller scale than the, the, the national, much more, more smaller than the national, it's more local and local and local. So anyway, uh, I have also a presentation before I open the discussions for the uh, floor. Uh, Dr. M uh, Engineer Mohammed Abdel Mawjoud, if you want to say something about the issue, if you, you have a presentation, right? About the topic, right? Yes, I have a present uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yes? Yes, if possible, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will speak on uh, the climate action efforts in Iraq, in my country, uh, which are addressing all uh, climate change uh, issues. Uh, 
uh, including uh, biodiversity loss, uh, the eco ecosystem issues, adaptation, mitigation, and resilience. So please, yeah. Can you, be, can you try to be close to the mic so people can hear you, please? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's good now? Yeah. yeah, thank you. So climate action efforts in Iraq, and I'll uh, focus on the national determined uh, contribution uh, NDC, which is uh, the supreme uh, uh, document uh, as a uh, very good uh, uh, addressing the climate change action, uh, climate change uh, issues in Iraq. Uh, national determined the contribution NDC uh, uh, as the Iraqi parliament voted on Iraqi's uh, accession to the Paris Climate uh, Agreement in uh, year 2020. The Iraqi Ministry of Environmental environment and uh, to increase the resilience of Iraqi society towards the impact of climate change, conducted a national action with a participation of national uh, partners, which result of the Iraqi parliament's approval of joining the Paris Agreement. Uh, the Iraqi government announced its uh, adherence to the Paris Agreement in accordance with the law number 31 in 2020. Uh, this document is uh, supreme uh, policy for the action in the field of climate change. Uh, this, regulation, uh, this regulation of adhering is an important step in the direction that supports the Iraqi economy and puts future generations on the beginning of the path and allows diverse, uh, diversification, uh, diversity, uh, diversity, der diverse uh, the economy and re relying on renewable energy and the clean uh, mechanism that, can, that uh, guarantee the uh, continuity of life of the surface on the earth. Uh, the first phase, according to the national determined contribution Iraqi efforts, will be divided into uh, phases. The first uh, phase or the first stage between 2020 and 2025 will focus on uh, the following. The first, incorporating climate action policy into national plans as policies and uh, legalization. Uh, and the second, ensuring the reduction of greenhouse gases. And the third is uh, establishing adaptation projects in a fragile area uh, that are highly vulnerable to climate change, as you see in the picture. The second stage contribution for the period from 2025 to 2030, uh, the focus will be on increasing the ambition and transferring modern technology to ensure the reduction of green uh, greenhouse, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. What is the priority under the Iraqi national determined uh, document? The, uh, the first is mitigation, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, from the oil and gas industry, especially methane emissions. The second, promote uh, nature-based uh, nature solution and ecosystem services. The third, is preserving biology, biological diversity from the effects of climate. Four, proper management of water resources and the use of modern uh, techniques in irrigation. Five, encouraging renewable and sustainable energies and uh, dismantling those energies in Iraq. Six, involving the private sector and economic trans transmission towards the green economy. What is the priorities of the cross-cutting issues in the implementation of the Iraqi national determined uh, contribution? The first is inclusion of young people in climate change issues, fighting poverty, uh, integrating the private sector of encouraging investment in the uh, transition towards a sustainable green economy, uh, achieving sustainable development goals, and gender equality. What is the outcome and what is the technical decision? First, Iraq will achieve an expected reduction between 1 to 2 percent of its total emissions, according to the national records of greenhouse gases through the national efforts. The second, Iraq will achieve 15 reduction, depending on the availability of international financial and technical support. 
What is the increasing ambition of climate action in Iraq? The first, Iraq adherence to the Global Methane Pledge. This is the first. The second, Iraq joining the NDC uh, partnership. Circulation of the Iraqi national contribution document. We have many points here. Supporting and building the, capacity, uh, the capacities of all ministries concerned with the adaptation and mitigation sector. Second, integrating the vision of the Iraqi NDC with the all national strategies and the plans, and this will be in coordination with the Ministry of Planning. Third, circulating the Iraqi NDC to all Iraqi embassies and diplomatic well, mission well, abroad well. In, in accordance with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Four, capacity building of the financial sub, uh, sector in Iraq and governmental and the private banks in generalizing uh, and implementing Iraqi's uh, obligation in the Paris uh, Agreement and the NDC document on the financial and banking sector. Integrating the private sector and the National Investment Committee in implementing the requirement of the transition towards the sustainable green economy in accordance with the requirement of the Iraqi NDC and understanding the future requirement of the global market. Finally, supporting civil society organization to implement the obligation, the objective the, obje the objectives of the Iraqi NDEs. Uh, all Iraqi NGOs are cooperating with others and the, with the, the local uh, government and work together uh, under the line of the NDC uh, with direct coordination and uh, cooperation with the Ministry of uh, Environment. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohammed, on uh, this presentation. It shows how Iraq at the national level, I think this is the official, uh, the NDC, of course, the national determined uh, contribution. This is uh, one of the documents that each country has to present to uh, each government, actually, each, uh, each, uh, each uh, uh, party has to present to this UNFCCC secretariat, and it is uh, one of the uh, milestones, very important milestones. It's still. Uh, uh, the NDCs are not uh, mandatory. They are all, uh, in, a, in, a, uh, in a way or another, they are very uh, voluntary. So uh, no one can can come and say how much you have done of this or uh, how how far you were able to achieve everything you have uh, put it as as a, a contribution. But anyway, uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, the issue of uh, nature-based solutions and ecosystem restoration were among the issues that were raised in, uh, in the NDC, and uh, this shows um, uh, the link that has been in Iraq uh, very clear. And I'm happy also that uh, it was number six. There was no number seven, but at least number six supporting the civil society uh, to implement the NDC. That's, uh, that's uh, also a good sign and a very good thing to see. I hope all the Arab countries will put uh, the same line and also we can also uh, discuss how they are going to support the civil society to do that. Okay, so we heard from our panelists and uh, I'm ready for the uh, uh, audience. So yes, Dr. Uh, Ustaz Mahmoud. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, my name is Mahmoud al Asawi, uh, editor-in-chief of uh, Jusur uh, 2030. It's an online uh, journal uh, for sustainable development uh, under umbrella of RIDE. Uh, my question is uh, about what are you talking about, uh, Dr. Ahmed, about uh, the lack of communication and uh, the public awareness for uh, the uh, uh, biodiversity and uh, for the global uh, biodiversity framework and also for uh, supporting resilience of, uh, of uh, against uh, and solution uh, for the ecosystem restoration. Uh, so I, I, I'd like to uh, say that uh, regarding the session, uh, national dialogue session, third uh, one, uh, it was held in Fayoum. I was be honored to be part of this uh, session. I participated in it. And I also uh, suggested uh, for Dr. Mustafa Fouda that uh, we, we need, I think we are su suggested that we need to uh, more engagement for media representative to uh, this dialogue. And unfortunately, the next one, next session for dialogue 
I, I think there is no uh, any uh, engagement from the media. Uh, so I'd like to uh, suggest again uh, for uh, any effort to uh, raise public awareness, uh, I, I, I think that media should be part of this uh, dialogue, not only uh, attending the dialogue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Mr. Mahmoud Aisawi. Just to clarify that uh, the, uh, the workshop that the media did not attend, it was uh, just a technical, a technical uh, workshop uh, for the biodiversity uh, uh, technical uh, 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 departments. And the idea was to de develop some messages that comes from the, but the one that has a wide range of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, representation, this is the one that we invited some of the media. So, so uh, Yanni, you are right, when we have, media is very important and we, we know that if we want to, uh, to, to, to raise the awareness and also to mainstream issues and to um, uh, have uh, uh, science to policy happening. We have to include the media because they, they become very strong uh, tool to uh, make the transition that we want to have. Do you want to add anything, Dr. Mustafa? Uh, in addition to what you have said, Dr. Ahmed, now, I would like to make it very clear to Dr. Mahmoud that uh, the issue of communication is not a simple matter that you get people and sit together and that's it. No. You need to look for what we call it communication language in a way that all of us from different disciplines, we talk the same language. If I come to you, for example, as a journalist and talk about a certain species that threatens whatever, it's completely different from uh, someone else uh, when you raise the issue of nature-based solution. What I'm trying to say, we need to change the communication language from technical, as Dr. Ahmed said, into a language that can be understood by everyone. From our experience, we need to speak in terms of investment, biodiversity or ecosystem, in terms of ecosystem, in terms of job creation, in terms of education, in terms of health, or whatever. This is the way how can we communicate in a way that all decision makers, at the same time, the public itself are aware of the issue. For example, how many people do you know more about, uh, about nature-based solutions? We talk about them for almost 10 years, but people don't get confused completely uh, between nature-based solution and ecosystem evaluation and many other evaluation as well. Uh, whether it is a natural issue solution or it is engineering aspect as well. So, so we need to go to the second level. Fortunately, the goodies that came out of the policy dialogue were very, very clear. When we developed the message to the president of COP27, we use a simple language that could be understood by everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mustafa. I have, uh, yeah, two, uh, yes, you start here, and then Dr. Sam. Yeah, so, uh, hello, everybody. I'm uh, Fatima from Lebanon. I'm an environmental scientist. I hold a PhD, two PhD actually in environmental sciences. And actually, I, uh, 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 what uh, just uh, doctor said attired my attention since I'm working with a German organization to develop a discourse concerning climate change with the proper glossary of Arabic terminology uh, because when you translate this word from English into Arabic, it won't have the same effect. So we are working on this and we are organizing focus groups in different countries in the Arab world in order to choose just the appropriate words to address this. But uh, I wanted to ask, before this, I wanted to ask, so uh, especially in Iraq, for example, because you, you mentioned the, the strategies for the mitigation, the adaptation and so, do you have any strategy concerning, uh, uh, beside the renewable energy uh, encouragement, uh, uh, concerning the fossil fuel extraction, the decrease, for example, of the uh, this is, is extraction issue. And thank you. Shokran, do you want to answer now, uh, Engineer Mohammed, or uh, I take more questions? Yeah. Uh, okay. Regarding the glossary, I, our organization already 
pay the glossary uh, for translation of uh, uh, terms, uh, environmental and engineering terms, and uh, it is ready now in uh, our booth. You can uh, come and uh, you are welcome. Uh, all uh, civil society organizations in Iraq are in line with uh, the NDC, the national NDC, but still every uh, organization has its uh, special policy. Uh, this policy is depending on, you know, the funds and uh, the regulation, the general uh, issues uh, uh, for each uh, organization. So as our organization, EAD has a special environmental policy and are working in this field with cooperation with the local government. Thank you. What about the strategy that she asked about? Do you know about if there is a strategy to, uh, you said, to uh, decrease the extraction of uh, fossil fuel, you mean? Yani, yallilu istikharag al petrol? Yes, if we are encouraging the sustainable uh, uh, green economy and we are encouraging renewable energy, so it would be good, for example, if we uh, 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 decrease the production amount of uh, barrels per per uh, day yeah, so or per year yeah. or per whatever because it uh, I think this would make more than one to two percent of uh, decrease in the emissions but uh, uh, I can answer yeah. from my perspective what Iraq is uh, is producing is not for Iraq it is for the global market so in, if Iraq will is, uh, use more renewables, this means that Iraq will use less uh, uh, fossil uh, fuel. So for Iraq, it is still OK. But for the market, for the whole world, still they need the, the, the gas that comes from Iraq. So but this is another discussion. But uh, still, Iraq, still Iraq can, can use and have more renewables and have more can reach the, uh, carb the, the, the zero carbon or neutral, whatever, uh, uh, at some point. But uh, the there, there are two different things. Yeah, the others can find their ways and go renewable, so. Yeah, definitely, if, if, the, if every country will take the renewables, there will be no market for the, the, for the, for the uh, petrol, petroleum. But it's okay, let's, let's see and shift. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I get the feeling that uh, we are, we are thinking the same way on everything, and sometimes it doesn't work, but we have to, be, we have to take the holistic approach, but I like very much your uh, position. Dr. Sami, you have the floor, and then I come here. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Sami Zala, Suez Canal University. Uh, if we're talking about nature-based solution, and if IUCN thinks soil is very important, it's one of the main solutions to do that, I always thought about creating national importance species list. I did that for some species. I think Dr. Imad and Dr. Mahmoud and Dr. Hani, if we can initiate this issue in Arab countries to create our own national importance list for our species, and we can start with soil fauna, which is not that difficult, especially soil invertebrates, which is actually the solution for absorb, to absorb all our emissions. Some scientists believe soil is our solution. So I think we need to think in that direction. That's personally what I'm doing now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sami. I'm sure there are some reactions that will come here. Dr. Hanit Faddal. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Sami. This is really something we need to do. I will not be shy to say that uh, our region is not considering this. And we, our region is one of the rare regions all over the world who didn't do the red list issues. So how are you going to work on natural based solution or other solutions if you don't know the situation? If you don't know the situation of your species and habitats? Thank you again because this is really what what we believe also as IUCN, to, 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 to implement any solution, you know, at least you, know, you need to know the situation. You need to know that to evaluate what you have and what you don't have. And what is going to be uh, listed 
in the red list or need to be <laughs> evaluated? Thank you, Dr. Sami again. Uh, thank you all, um, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Khaled Mahrouz, uh, Professor of Poultry Production and the head, head of, Pult of Faculty of Technology and uh, Development, Dagazig University. My question is for uh, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, my question is for uh, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, you talked about uh, methane emission and that Iraq will try to uh, decrease uh, methane emission. Um, what are the strategies? you will follow to decrease the methane emission, especially that uh, animal production and the livestock production is the main sources of me methane, uh, methane em emission. Uh, although this is not really uh, very much related to our topic, but I will wait to see. Let's take an if there are any other questions, and then if there is no more questions, I can ask uh, Engineer Mohammed to respond to to your point about the methane and uh, the emissions. Uh, do we have any more questions, comments? And, oh, uh, Professor Michael Schoolus, you would like to say something. Well, thank you. Uh, first yeah. of all, thank you and uh, congratulations with, uh, for all this work. Just on the issue raised uh, by the previous uh, um, intervention, I think that uh, in the Arab region, particularly in the northern Mediterranean, uh, we still have much less protected areas than in the rest of the region. And we as uh, a federation, uh, uh, Mediterranean Information Office for Environment, Culture, and Sustainable Development, which brings together all the organizations and uh, with Pilar the Raed in, for the South, we very much uh, advocate uh, this as an important uh, and necessary um, step for the protection of uh, particularly of threatened species. And I'm sure that IUCN and uh, the rest uh, will uh, work towards this direction. We are, um, uh, we, we, we are ready to have with you all a campaign on that, a further campaign on that. I think uh, it is the right moment, particularly uh, in view of uh, the next uh, biodiversity convention meeting. And uh, as uh, it came, I, I mean, it is clear that we don't even break the disappearance of species. I think we have to see uh, more uh, organized ways in, 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 in intervening. And um, I think that uh, it is the time that we raise this issue as uh, a truly um, part and parcel of uh, the adaptation solutions. Thank you, Professor Skoulos, uh, for that. Um, Engineer Mohammed, do you want to respond to the point raised by the, yes. the doctor? from? I can say that uh, this uh, subject is related to the negotiation, negotiation between the uh, Iraqi uh, delegation and the uh, COP delegation, and it uh, requires uh, uh, stages of uh, uh, technology transfer and capacity building. So it, this is uh, need some time. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think we, are, we have uh, almost uh, reached to the, uh, the end of the session, but uh, let me just make some concluding remarks that it has been uh, very obvious from the work that the Small Grass Program has done in Egypt and also, uh, uh, you know, try to make this extended to the region. Um, with all the regional uh, stakeholders that uh, the issue of uh, the climate uh, uh, threats and the ecosystem restoration 
is a topic that we need to uh, uh, put it uh, 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 as a priority uh, for our work, and not only in the Ministry of Environment, but this has to deal with all the different ministries. This has to be mainstreamed in the different policies, talking about uh, energy, agriculture, uh, water resource and irrigation, tourism, mining, industry, and uh, the, the effort that has been done uh, with, uh, by the SGP and with the support of MAPA Foundation uh, was uh, the, the beginning of something that could be developed for the future. Uh, I hope that uh, we will be able uh, also, uh, maybe I can discuss this later with Yoko and the team of the SGP, how we can build on the results that we have got and maybe we can try to find um, uh, another source of uh, support to continue the dialogue on this and to try to at least to build on what we have at, at least established in, in the region and in Egypt uh, specifically. But, um, uh, but without the support of MAVA and also uh, the, uh, the, the support of the SGP, we would not be able to do what we have done in the last two years, the, the, three, the five workshops, uh, four national and one uh, regional. Uh, anyway, I, I have to thank uh, the two organizers, uh, 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 the UUA, Saluti, Soko, thank you very much for giving the support for organizing this and also for engineer Mohammed Abdel Mawjoud, the EADE for uh, the contribution and the support and also for uh, the SGP, uh, the GF Small Grants Program and uh, thanks to all the panelists here, uh, we kept you until the end of the day. It is the energy day, so I hope we still have energy, but uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it, will, uh, we, we, it will remain energy, inshallah, and we will be powerful as usual. And uh, thank you all who participated today. Uh, uh, and uh, please don't forget, we have put a very small break uh, outside. It was supposed to be inside, but uh, as you see, the security, they said for security reason, we have to, to put the break outside. I don't know what happened today. Maybe... Uh, they, they think that maybe we are bringing you something dangerous, but it, believe me, it is very nice and delicious, something that we have uh, also produced through one of the projects that's working on uh, climate adaptation. And it is produced by a community from the north of Delta. So please enjoy uh, tasting some of our, uh, our uh, products here of the uh, Small Grants Program. And enjoy your evening. Thank you very much for joining us today.